Hi everyone, my name is Cheryl Horry and I am the founder and chief strategist of Pacific Campaign House. We are a full service digital agency that is dedicated to helping progressive causes and candidates really find their footing and amplify their messages online. And today we're going to talk about the 10 digital campaign essentials that we really think that any campaign, whether it's a presidential campaign or a city council campaign, need in order to have a successful, um, a successful digital presence. And so I'm going to share my screen with you guys right now. All right. Um, so like I said, today um, we're going to be talking about online and digital communications and the 10 things that um, any campaign, big or small, could use um, to have a successful online um, effort. The first thing is your website. Um, so your website is really going to be the anchor of, of any digital program. It's one of the most accessible components of your campaign, meaning that anyone, whether they are the press or a major gift donor, a small dollar donor, a supporter, a friend that you went to college with um, that you haven't seen in 10 years, can all access your website to get a glimpse of, of what your campaign stands for what you stand for um, and, and get a very um, sort of cursory look at, at what your goals and objectives as a candidate might be. So when you're putting together your website and you're designing it, um, and whether that is you have a professional website designer and developer putting um, building out your, your site, or if you're doing it yourself um, on a platform like Squarespace or Wix, um, some things to, to really think about to help guide the process is, um, one, who is your audience? And again, like I mentioned, your website has one of the broadest audiences of any other digital platform um, or element that we're going to talk about today. Um, and so that's really something to, uh, to, to consider as you're, as you're going is who's going to be coming to your website primarily. Um, the next thing is what are your objectives? And you could have more than one objective. So for a lot of political websites, we see that their, their primary objective is to get people to sign up for, for their email list. And the way that we know that that's their primary objective is we will go to their website and anything above the fold, um, which is that first sort of square you see before you have to scroll down is the things that are in, in that area are gonna be what their primary objectives are. And so it's sort of looking at what the most predominant element is there. And if it's a form field to sign up to join our team or to join our effort, then we know that email acquisition and building their list is the most important. If the, the largest part of, of their website that's above the fold, as a donate option, then um, getting people to donate online could be, could be one of their biggest objectives. So thinking about what your objectives are to make sure that if email acquisition or donations um, or reading more about you is the most important thing for you, that you're really prioritizing that and making that easy for people to find. Um, and then the last thing that we think really sets apart websites for candidates um, from, from, from sort of just being there to really taking it to the next level is, um, is making it a priority for your website to be accessible. Um, and that includes in language. So if you are in a district that has a heavy Spanish speaking population or a heavy Korean or Chinese speaking population, that your website's also translated and not just through Google Translate, but translated um, well into the, into the other language. Um, and then the, the last thing sort of here on, um, on the note of accessibility is we're seeing more and more that campaigns and, and folks online are putting in effort to make sure that if somebody is visually impaired, um, that, that they're also able to consume their con your content. And so what that means is if you have an image, you also um, on the back end have alternative text that if somebody can't see the image or if somebody can't read it, um, the software that, that folks use to read text out loud from websites will also pick up um, what, what that image is. So that's um, 
that's just something to sort of think about if you're trying to take your website to the next level um, to really make sure that you're reaching um, very specific audiences that, that might be helpful um, for, for your campaign or might, might be important to consider. The next, um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is your email program. And so your email program is one of the um, one of the great ways to really have time, space, and sort of digital real estate to reach out to people who are supporting you online. So chances are, if they're on your email list, they've signed up to get updates um, or notifications or fundraising emails from you that they really care about your campaign. They want to know more. Um, and so having a an email program to reach out to people who have said like, hey, I've given you my personal information. I know that I get hundreds of emails every day, but I've chosen to give you my email address because I want to know more um, about your campaign. Really taking advantage um, of that and, and letting your supporters know that, hey, like you're here, you're communicating about issues that are important to them, um, you're sort of acting as a resource, um, are all, are all um, elements of a successful email program. So some of the things um, that, we, that we see with email programs that, that work really well um, is one, an email program, um, an email CRM. So that's gonna be your, your platform or your program that holds all of your email, your emails and that you generally send your emails from that syncs with your fundraising platform. And so the reason that this is so important is that if you're planning to do online fundraising, which I think most campaigns that are, are doing email programs, one of their primary objectives is to fundraise, is to make sure that your email platform and your fundraising platform will talk to each other seamlessly. And the reason that that's so important is because if you're sending out an email that is asking people to to donate to your campaign and you are asking for only five dollars from a donor who has regularly given you a hundred dollars that's not quite going to fit your your audience whereas likewise if you're asking folks who have never given to your campaign to give 250 dollars um it's, it's also going to feel a little bit off but if your email CRM and your fundraising platform um, talk to each other, um, meaning that whenever somebody donates to your fundraising platform, that information is automatically sent to your email CRM, um, you'll be able to do a lot of segmenting to make sure that you can really tailor your message to each of those audiences, which brings us to the next thing, which is list segmentation. When you're running an email program, it is really important to be able to segment your list easily based off of uh, certain behaviors or characteristics of, of folks in your list. And so what that might be, like I said um, a second ago, is you might want to be segmenting out based off of whether or not they've donated to your campaign or not. You might want to be segmenting out whether or not people are in your district or not. So maybe the language of somebody's in your district or in your county um, is more about we or us or um, some of the, the more nuanced elements that really only people who live in your geographic area would understand, whereas maybe you send a more general email to people who aren't within your district, specifically explaining why it's so important that they should care about your, your district and your election. So being able to, to segment your list is going to be really important to make sure um, that your, your audience, which might be very, very diverse, um, are, are getting messages that are really appropriate for them. And then the last thing um, that, that we see is having respect for your email list and, 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 and using and being an engaging resource. Um, and so I'm sure if any of you get emails from political campaigns, there are definitely programs out there that really treat their lists like they're an ATM. Every email is, hey, we need money. Hey, we need you to chip in. This is really urgent. You need to give right now. Um, and that sort of is, that tactic worked um, really successfully five or six years ago, and to a certain extent, it still um, it still works when it comes to raising money. But if you guys are trying to cultivate a list that will be with you for the long term, that you know you're showing them that you treat them with respect and you are providing them resources back 
whether that's information um, on on COVID vaccines or the the latest on local legislation in your in your area, sort of giving that information back to your list as opposed to just asking for things is really going to go a long way in terms of building respect and trust with your list. So some of the most um, successful programs that we see have this this level of mutual trust with with their list and, and mutual respect with their list. All right. Um, the next thing that we have sort of talked about a little bit um, already is your fundraising platform. Um, and so similarly, um, your fundraising, similar to your email, your fundraising platform is going to be what holds all of your online donation information. Um, it's going to hold all of your, your donor names, addresses, how much they've given in the past. Um, and some of the things that we think are really important when picking a fundraising platform are um, one, does it sync with your email CRM? So again, very similar to does your email CRM sync with your fundraising platform? Does your fundraising platform talk to your email um, platform? Um, two is can you track where donations are coming from? And so this is really important if you are trying to build a robust online fundraising program, knowing whether or not your, uh, your, your highest volume of donations is coming from your email program, or if you're running um, an SMS or text, um, text message based outreach, or if they're coming from social media, having a good understanding of where your online donors are coming from is going to be so important because I know with a lot of campaigns, capacity is definitely limited. So if you know that all of your, your online donors are coming from your text message outreach, I think it would be more important to, to really focus and concentrate your effort there than say um, maybe email where you're pushing out email after email. It takes a lot of work and you're putting graphics in and links and things like that. And if it's not not working there, um, you might not want to put your time to that. So, so having the ability to track where your donations are coming from um, is, is going to be really helpful for, for your campaign, both in the short term and the long term. And then the final thing here um, that we we think is really important is does it um, does your online fundraising platform allow for recurring donations? And so what this means is does your platform let people say like, hey, I want to give this candidate $5 every month, or I want to give this candidate $15 every month. Um, and a lot of the programs that um, Pacific Campaign House does, we really focus on building a strong recurring fundraising program. Because what that means for the campaign or the organization is, you know, they'll be able to know every single month, hey, we can count on $10,000 in recurring money coming in which allows them to budget out further to know, hey, we're, we're going to have this money, we can count on it. Um, and so that really, that really goes a long way, um, both within the digital program, but, but outside of that as well, kind of thinking about the big picture of the campaign. So making sure that your fundraising platform allows people to give um, recurring donations is, is, is really important for us. The next thing is going to be your audience um, and targeting data. So we talked about audience a little bit earlier on um, in this in this presentation, but whenever you're putting together any sort of communications, whether it's digital or otherwise, thinking about who your audience is is going to be really important because you want to make sure that the message that you are sending is appropriate for that audience and the platform that you are sending it out on is um, is 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 going to be the best platform for for your message or your ad unit or your your graphic whatever that might be um so a couple of things to think about one is um where is your data from so we were working with a candidate who knew very very well that her um her target audience was um were people 44 and below and she bought a voter file she knew confidently like hey like this is really this is accurate we've worked with this this is what we've been using to door knock and and all of the data lines up so thinking about sort of where your data is coming from as well as how well do you as a candidate or somebody who's running a campaign know your target audience um 
because knowing sort of who it is you're talking to is, is going to be helpful because then you know what are the issues that are going to be the most important to them or on the other end of that if you know what issues are most important to you are you sending those issues to people who who care about them um, are you finding the people that have similarly aligned values as yourself and then the last part of that is where does your audience spend time online? So thinking about our client that we that we talked about a second ago, they were all 44 and below. So when we think about the different platforms that people 44 and below um, spend their time on, it's going to be um, more Instagram, less Facebook. Um, Facebook's going to be a ton to skew a little bit older with those 55 plus. Um, and then we're probably not going to be on Snapchat or TikTok, which tends to skew much lower. Um, so again, thinking about like who your target audience is, where they spend their time online um, and how to sort of meet them in the moment of, of where they are. The next thing is a paid media budget. So this is going to be your, your digital advertising budget that you could use on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, search ads, um, anything, um, anything that you might need to put money behind um, for, for advertising online. And so some questions here to, to consider is one, what is your timeline? So if you are trying to build a really strong email list, but the election is in a month from now, it might not be the best investment for you to build up a list that is only going to, um, the, the potentially will only survive for a month. Because when you have, when you're building up an email list, you really want to take the time to talk to the people on your list. If they've just joined their, your list, they might not have a great idea of who you are. Um, and so giving them the time to cultivate um, trust with you is, is going to be important. And so again, if you're only a month out from your election, it might be, um, it might be a better idea to focus on persuasion, persuading people that you are the best candidate for, for the job or um, making sure that they know how to vote, that they've requested their mail-in ballot, if that's something that's important, as opposed to uh, building an email list at that, at that point. So thinking about what your timeline is, is going to help guide where you spend your budget. Um, also, what are your objectives? So um, your ob objective could be email acquisition. It could be growing your email list. It could also be brand ID or name ID. Do people know who you are and that you're running for office? Um, is it persuasion? Do they need to know that you are the best candidate? They already know who you are. They already know that you're running, um, but do they know, need to know that you're the best candidate? Is it mobilization? Um, they now know that you're running for office. They know that you're the best candidate, um, but it's just a matter of this final step, pushing them over the finish line and making sure that they get out to vote. So thinking about what your objectives are sort of in line with what your timeline is, is going to um, help you spend your budget the most efficiently. And the final thing here is how are you measuring success for your, for your paid media? So maybe that is clicks to your website. We want to drive people there to learn more, to learn more about you. Maybe that is watching a video um, on a particular issue area that you really care about, making sure that people watch the entire, the entire thing. Um, maybe it's just views. If we're talking about name ID um, or increasing brand ID, all we really care about is getting out in front of as many people as possible. <clears throat> We don't necessarily need them to take any action. We just need them to see that we're that we are running for office. Um, so how you're measuring success um, sort of can change and shift over the course of your your digital advertising efforts. There. The next thing is social media platforms. Um, so some questions to consider here um, again is who is your audience. So when we're thinking about social media. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, TikTok, Snapchat, who your audience is and um, where they spend their time online is going to be really important. Um, because if you know that you are going after Gen Z, your social media effort is probably going to look a lot different than if you're going after um, Gen X or, or older. Um, and then thinking about what your team's capacity is, is also going to help shape this. So ideally, um, you have enough capacity to hit 
all of the different demographics on all of the different social media platforms. But I think that in reality for a lot of campaigns that that just isn't possible. And so we really recommend that you figure out who your audience is and where they spend their time online and then allocate your, um, your team's capacity to, to meet those people where, where they are and where they spend their time online as opposed to trying to stretch yourselves too thin by having a Snapchat account and a TikTok account and an Instagram and a Twitter and a Facebook. Um, if you can really hone in on, on who your audience is and where they spend their time online, you're gonna save your team a lot, a lot of time um, an effort that that could be going to something else. All right, next is visual creative. Um, so here are some questions to um, to really think about um, in in relation to your visual creative, which is which is anything um, visual really that you see online. So much of what we see today is our our graphics and and videos, and a lot of that beyond the words or the message or the audio, the sort of visual element is what shapes whether or not we think that something is aligned with, with how we think or um, is professionally done or doesn't look so great. Um, so visual creative is, is an important part of any, of any digital platform um, or digital campaign rather. And so some things to consider here is one, do you have a brand guide? So that means the colors that you use for your campaign, the different fonts that you use for your campaign, are they all consistent? When you put together graphics for your Instagram account, do they all look like they belong to the same campaign or are all of them slightly different? Um, is it easy to say like, hey, yes, this is a part of um, campaign A. And we know that because the colors are, are all the same, the fonts are all the same, or does it look a little bit um, disjointed because we, we can't really tell if, um, if just sort of looking at the feed, if um, this is all done by the same team or the same person. Um, so having, having a brand guide is gonna be important to help, to help guide that. Next is, are your visuals optimized for different platforms or devices? So in talking about all the social media platforms and talking about capacity, which we just did a second ago, um, each of those platforms have different specs or size dimensions that will work best for them. So you want to make sure that any sort of visual that you put out there is catered and tailored specifically to the platform that you're trying to put them up onto. So for example, on, a, um, on an Instagram or Facebook feed, the specs that we're looking at, the dimensions are gonna be a one by one ratio, whereas um, an Instagram story or a Facebook story is gonna be a 16 by nine. A YouTube is gonna be um, a nine by 16. Twitter is also gonna be different. So really thinking about um, and making sure that any sort of visual you put out there is, is gonna be sized appropriately for the platform. And then the last thing here is, is your creative easy to view? So um, with how much we consume online, making sure that your creative um, is easy on the eyes. It, it doesn't have too much text that's overwhelming. It's, there's a lot of spacing in between it. So you, you aren't trying to like really like squint to see um, the different elements of it. Having really visually appealing creative is going gonna, is gonna to give people reason to pause as they're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook to take a look at your, your ad or your social media post. Next is rules of engagement. So rules of engagement are how, you, are how your campaign interacts online with, with other people. Um, and so some things to, to think about when putting together rules of engagement or sort of a guideline of, of when you talk to people, when you don't talk to people, when you engage, when you don't engage, um, are the following questions. One is who will your campaign engage with online? So is that individual voters? Is it only organizations? Is it only verified people? Um, who are they? Who are you willing to spend time talking to? Because again, thinking about your capacity um, online, if you have sort of set in in stone, like we're we're not going to talk to these these types of groups or these top types of people, that's going to help. Um, 
going to help whoever's managing your social media move, move through it a lot faster. Um, what will you do if somebody trolls your account? And I think, unfortunately, at this point, it's, it's almost expected that if you put something out there on the internet, somebody might say something negative, somebody might say something rude to you. Um, so what, what is your game plan if that does happen? And um, similarly, what is your tolerance for that? I think that there are different, um, there are different gradients and different levels of sensitivity of if you are willing to um, take somebody sort of starting a constructive debate versus if somebody throws in a bunch of swear words, like what, what is your level of tolerance and sort of what will you do? Um, will you have a three strikes and you're gonna be blocked from the page rule? Um, do you automatically delete anything that has, that has cursing or swearing in it? So thinking about how you um, are going to engage with other people online will, will help um, setting yourself up for success rather will, will help you um, when, when you guys are in the thick of it. All right, the next thing is your mobilization platform. So this is gonna be how you will do any sort of digital digital organizing. And we like to, to have sort of a home base. So similarly to how we have a fundraising platform and an email platform, having a digital organizing platform to, to sort of return to or to have anchor your, your mobilization um, we think is, is, is important. And so this will be where um, you could direct potentially supporters to register for events. Maybe you have an events calendar um, that people can go to RSVP or sign up or get details about upcoming town halls or things like that. Um, does this platform integrate seamlessly with your website? Um, and so this is going to be important because um, we want to make the user experience as easy as possible for people. So if they want to come do an event, um, do they have to go to a different website? Is there a separate link that they need to go to to RSVP? Or can they just return back to your, your home base website to, to sign up for something? Um, and then lastly, can you send communications through it? So is this something where you need to download the entire RSVP list and then re-upload it and send an email? Um, or is this something where you can send like a quick text reminder, everyone who signed up, send them a quick note saying, hey, um, friendly reminder, we're meeting at the coffee shop to, to start canvassing today. Um, being able to seamlessly sort of send communications through your mobilizing platform, um, again, will, will save you a lot of time as, as you're working um, through your digital campaign. And then finally is compliance or, or legal. Um, and so hopefully you've had a legal team um, or a compliance team help you get set up to, to run for office, make sure that all of your boxes are checked. Um, but if not, we really recommend, especially if you're doing any sort of paid um, media outreach, that you have a legal team that can review your that they, they can review your creative and make sure that everything that you're doing is above board. Um, and so I've been doing this for the better part of the last decade, and we still have our legal team sort of take a quick glance at the creative that goes out the door to make sure that hey. Like, we have all of the licensing for all of the images that we've used. We have the licensing for the music that we've used. Um, the disclaimers are the appropriate size. They're on there for long enough. Um, so having a compliance team look at your, your content is gonna be really important for the following reasons. Um, one, ensuring that you're not breaking any rules. Um, if you are breaking any rules and they all differ by, uh, by region, by locality, by um, the si sort of size of your campaign, making sure that you're not breaking any rules um, is, is, is gonna be important. You, you never want to be the candidate that gets um, a bad press hit because you've, you've done something that was really easily avoidable. Um, and similarly, avoiding any, any legal issues. So you don't wanna get fined. You don't, um, you don't want to have a photographer say, hey, like you used my image, you didn't give me credit or you used my image and it was copyrighted. Um, so having a legal team um, is, is such a good investment to just have them even like glance over your, your content before you push it out is really important. Um, and so that is it for the 10 um, digital campaign essentials that you um, that you will need for any campaign, big or small. Um, this is my contact information below. If you guys have any questions at all, it's Cheryl at PacificCampaignHouse.com. Um, and thank you guys so much for, for having me today. I hope, um, I hope the rest of your trainings go well. Have a good one.